In this presentation, I am going to discuss the excerpt article appears from the Postcolonial Studies Reader, entitled Under Western Eyes, Feminist Scholarship and Colonial Discourses by Chandra Talpade Mohanty. But before we proceed to the main focus of this discussion, I would like to introduce first the author of this excerpt. She is Chandra Talpade Mohanty. She was born in Mumbai, Indian on 1955, a distinguished professor of Women's and Gender Studies, Sociology, and the Cultural Foundation of Education and Dean's Professor of the Humanities at Syracuse University. Her discipline is about women's studies and feminism. Her work focuses on transnational feminist theory, anti-capitalist feminist praxis, anti-racist education, and the politics of knowledge. Early years, she served as a professor of women's studies at the Hamilton College in Clinton, New York. Now, let us define some of the important terminologies that I found in this article. These terms are arranged from how they appeared to the text and not by alphabetical order. These words were not directly defined in the article, so I got their definitions from Merriam Webster's. So the first word is the heterogeneity. It is a noun means the quality or state of consisting of the similar or diverse elements. Also, the quality or state of being heterogeneous. The next word is monolith monolithic. It is a noun which means of relating to or resembling a monolith. Monolith is a noun which means an organized whole that acts as a single unified powerful or influential force. Or in simple word, huge or massive. The next word is homogeneous. It is an adjective which means of same or a similar kind or nature. And the last word is hegemonic. It is a noun means preponderant influence or authority over others or the social, cultural, ideolo ideological, or economic influence exerted by a dominant group, or in simple word, domination. On to our discussion. Let's begin with the main point of Mohanty in her article. Mohanty's arguments takes a critical look at Western feminist scholarships, approach to third world women, and how they treat the third world women as a homogeneous group. This means that Western feminist scholars tend to see all the third world women as essentially the same. These women can be sorted into a single category that applies to all non-Western women universally. Thus, they ignoring the diversity of the average third world women's experiences by creating a singular idea within this group. And to support these claims, I put some of the textual evidences from the article that will prove that Mohanty's argument is about the misconceptions of Western feminists towards the non-Western women. The relationship between women, a cultural and ideological composite other, constructed through diverse representational discourses. And women, as a real material subjects of their collective history, is one of the central questions the practice of feminist scholarship seeks to address. So this connection between women as historical subjects and the representation of women produced by hegemonic discourses is not a relation of direct identity or a relation of correspondence or simple implication. It is an arbitrary relation set up by particular cultures. An analysis of sexual di difference in the form of a cross-cultural singular monolithic notion of patriarchy or male dominance leads to the construction of a similarly reductive and homogeneous notion of what I call the third world difference that stable a historical something that apparently oppresses most, if not all the women. It is the production 
which means it is a production of this third world difference that Western feminists appropriate and colonize the fundamental complexity and conflicts which characterize the lives of women of different classes, religion, culture, races in these countries. It is in this process of homogenization and systematization of the oppression of women in the third world that power is exercised in much of recent Western feminist discourse. There are three main analytic principles that Mohanty claims that was used by Western feminism in regards to the third world. The first one is the principle concerns the strategic location or situation of the category women. This is the context of analysis. It means that Mohanty sees in the Western feminist discourse is the tendency to assume that the term women is universal and cross-cultural category. In short, women are homogeneous category defined by homogeneous oppression. The second principle consists in the critical use of particular methodology in providing proof of universality and cultural cross-cultural validity. The third is more is a more specifically political principle underlying the methodologies and the analy analytic strategies. The model of power and struggle they imply and suggest. Mohanty argued that as a result of these principles, a homogeneous notion of the oppression of women as a group is assumed, which in turn produces the image of an average third world woman. This, third, this average third world woman leads an essential tr truncated life based on her feminine gender. And being third world, they being assumed to be ignorant, poor, uneducated, tradition unbound, domestic, family oriented, and victimized, and etc. She also argued that damaging the solidarity and unity among women and also stratifies them into two opposite groups, which means that these average third world women are opposite of the Western women who are universally liberated, enjoy quality, have control over their own bodies and sexuality, who are also superior, intelligent and education, educated, and these third world women are in need of some kind of salvation. The homogeneity of women as a group is produced not on the basis of biological essentials, but rather on the basis of secondary sociological and anthropology, anthropological universals means that in any given piece of feminist analysis, women are characterized as a singular group on a basis of shared oppression. And, same, and sameness of their oppression is what binds them by a sociological notion. And this may result in an assumption of women as an always already constituted group, one which has been labeled powerless, exploited, sexually harassed, and etc. by feminist scientific, economic, legal, and sociological discourse. This brings us to the major point that Mohanty claims that this homogeneous approach to non-Western women is an act of colonialism in Western feminist discourse. She defines colonialism in the first part of the excerpt that she said colonialization almost invariably implies a relation of structural domination and suppression often violent of the heterogeneity of the subjects in questions and in this case many western feminist scholars reduce the diverse heterogeneities of women in third world colonizing it by forming it into a homogeneous category for Western scholarship to use.
My conclusion, under Western eyes, informs us that the factor that unites women as sisters in struggle is the sociological notion of the sameness in withstand oppression, regardless of class, culture, or geographical borders by belong to. Mohanty debunked the assumption of the Western feminist approach that third world women are homogeneous group, are essentially the same. She suggests that it is imperative to be mindful of the homogeneity of the Western scholarly establishment when producing and disseminating texts that emphasize monolithic terms such as third world women. Otherwise, we give way to yet another form of discursive colon colonization that not only overlooks pluralism but also impedes the cause of women. Okay. On to the application. The story that I can apply or relate to this article is the story of Impeng Negro. I choose this story because I noticed that being different from the others will lead to mistreatment just like the women from the article. The women especially in the third world countries like Africa's and South and Southeast Asia were having the same experience like the story of Impen. Though Impen is a boy, let's just disregard his gender, apply this story as general. Impen Negro is a short story about a young boy named Impen who was born with different look, dark complexion, thick and curly hair, flat nose, large eyes and lips that look more like his father who was an African American. Despite having the said description, Impen was described to be more hardworking and diligent than anyone in his town, but on his normal days and work, he would encounter people who tended to tease him because of how he looked and criticisms would normally come his way. One day, his most hated co-worker Ogre appeared in front of him and teased him some more which resulted in violent fight between the two of them in which Impen had won. There is one scene in this novel that catches my attention when I read it. This is from his most hated co-worker named Impen. He said, Negrong negro ka nga negro, tila nandidiring sa sabi, sabihin ni Ogor. Magsusunurang ng manukso ang iba pang mga aguador, pati ang mga batang naroon. Tignan mo ang buhok, kulot na kulot. Tignan mo ang ilong, sarat na sarat, nakupo, ang nguso na mamalirong. This can prove that having a look that was different from the others can lead to mistreatment. In this scene, some people are describing him and making fun of him. At the same time, these people represent the colonizers in the article of Mohanty and Impen represent the third world women who experiencing mistreatments. Another thing to consider is how color was used in the Philippines during the period of colonization. According to Bienvenido Dumbera in his essay, The Literary Work and Values Education, Two Texts and Context, it was used as a weapon of oppression against the Indio. Even among victims, color separates man from man, keeping them from uniting against those who victimized them. Back then, before, because of having a brown skin as we compared to the latter's white-skinned Filipinos were looked down upon by their Spanish and American colonizers. This difference in color led to the othering of dark-skinned Filipinos in their own country. Long after the colonization period, the white skin is more superior than dark skin. Mentality lives on in the country, making those who have dark skin feel ashamed. It only means that having black skin is inferior and having white skin is superior because that is the mentality that colonizers put in minds of Filipino that lives on in the country. And this is my references.